Day 339. Today there is some bad news from the east. After capturing a key village to the south of Bakhmut, the Russians were able to expand control over the region and advance in the area on a hill that would allow them to completely cut off Ukrainian supplies. Luckily, the Ukrainians were prepared for this development and are ready to restructure their defense at any moment. Here, the Russians made several advances. The first axis of attack became the northeastern suburbs. The main Ukrainian fortification in this region is the meat processing plant. The plant is surrounded by a layer of small houses, which prevents the Russians from attacking it directly. Expansion to the west is not viable, because that would require the Russians to cross the river in the middle of a field, and then storm Ukrainian positions in the industrial zone across the railways. That is why the main goal of the Russians here is to move south and help the Russians who have been struggling to cross the pond in the eastern outskirts for the last six months. So far the fights are still taking place on the outer streets, so there is a long way to go towards the meat processing plant. The second axis of advance became the southern suburbs. As you remember, the Russians recently established control over the last block of the village of Opatna. Opatna is separate only from the administrative point of view, so de facto the fights to the south of Bakhmut continue and no big changes or breakthroughs happened here. The most important developments happened to the southwest of Bakhmut. While the capture of Opatna did not give the Russians any tactical advantage, the capture of Klishivka opened access to a lot of possibilities. The Russians immediately moved in two directions, Bakhmut and Chasiv Yar. As of now, the Russians have already cleared the forest, and today the first clashes took place in the rural zone, north of the forest. There are a lot of small houses here, which means that there is a possibility of maintaining a permanent presence in this region. And if the Russians achieve it, they will establish physical control over the road that connects Ivanivsk and Bakhmut. But this is not the worst thing. As you remember, the Ukrainians were not using this road anyways, because it was too close to the front line and there are other safer roads. The worst result of establishing control over this rural area is that the Russians will have all other Ukrainian roads in the back in direct vision. If we look at the topographic map, we can see that this rural area is located on a hill, while the last Ukrainian supply road is in the lowlands and is only 3 kilometers away from it. The good news is that taking control over this region is not as easy, as there are a lot of powerful Ukrainian positions around, which makes it very easy to push the Russians back. The Russians would need to penetrate all Ukrainian positions south of Bakhmut by around 1 km and simultaneously storm Ivanivsk in order to secure this position. The Ukrainians understand the importance of this position, and so far they did not allow the Russians to even enter it. And even if the Russians start to really push here, there is still a number of adjustments that the Ukrainians could make. The first thing the Ukrainians will likely do in case of an increased threat is adjusting their defense. In my estimation, the first step would be to leave the eastern part of Bakhmut. By doing this, the Ukrainians would achieve three things. Firstly, the Ukrainians would shorten the front line from 12 km to 9 km meaning that the demand for troops and supplies may drop by 25%. Secondly, this move would allow quickly retreating in the case of urgent withdrawal, as all the forces will be on the same bank of the river. Thirdly, the Ukrainians will move from the least fortified positions on the outskirts to the most fortified positions, such as high-rise buildings, industrial zones and railway stations. Overall, even though the Russians achieved little to no progress by trying to take Bakhmut in front, the Russians did manage to establish control over less fortified positions around Bakhmut, which threatens to cut off Ukrainian supplies. Such developments are not surprising, as the area to the south of Bakhmut is too vast, allowing the Russians to attack sparsely located villages one by one. And however well fortified they may have been, constant artillery fire and airstrikes slowly make sure that there is nothing left to defend. As the Institute for the Study of War concludes, the Ukrainian defense of Bakhmut is still a strategically sound effort, because if the Ukrainians abandon such town's fortresses prematurely, it would force them to construct hasty defensive positions in less favorable terrain. But by deciding to hold the ground, 
The Ukrainians ensured that the Russians have been funneling their manpower and equipment into the area since May 2022 with no operational, let alone strategic success. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show your support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next report.